Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here. All right, we finally have it. It's finally here. After many leaks and much anticipation, the iPhone 11 is officially official. So there's gonna be a separate video on the also new iPhone 11 Pro. Uh, it's either about to be up or already up, depending on when you watch this, but it'll be the first link below that like button. I'll make sure of that. But either way, this is the new iPhone 11, the successor to the iPhone 10R, and this is your first look at it. So as you can already tell, it's gonna look and feel very familiar with uh, just a few key changes. So design-wise, I was kind of hoping for maybe a slightly different design, maybe squared up a bit, or maybe a slightly smaller notch, or something a bit more modern feeling, but that's not really what's happening here. It's almost the exact same design as the iPhone XR, same curves, same buttons, same mute switch, same notch, same lightning port, same speaker setup, same pretty much everything. The display is still an LCD. It's a 6.1 inch liquid retina display. Still the same roughly 720p resolution, no bump there. But what's different is the Apple logo on the back is now moved down a bit to the exact center of the phone and it no longer has the iPhone text, just the logo. And really the main new feature on the outside, as you can tell, is the camera. And that's really the main theme here. That's the main focus, if you will, of the iPhone 11. It's the camera. Dual cameras now, one 12 megapixel standard and one 12 megapixel ultra wide. And this camera bump, it's kind of interesting. So the phone is of course, as you can see, still glossy all the way across the whole back like last year. But then just this rounded square that's a little bit taller than the rest has this sort of frosted matte glass with a camera circle with the metal rings inside it. And they sort of raise at two different levels. So it's the square camera bump and then the camera bumps inside of the camera bump. And you can feel that it's definitely unique and it's easily the most polarizing part of the whole phone. Some people like it, some people hate it. Uh, to me, I've been staring at it for so long shooting this video that it just kind of looks like any other iPhone at this point. It's fine, um, but actually it's basically the opposite of the iPhone 11 Pro, which has a frosted glass back on the whole phone, but then a glossy glass camera square. So fun fact. But anyway, like I said, 11 Pro video is separate. I'm just pumped to have an ultra wide camera on the back of the iPhone now. And both cameras are capable of all the same stuff, both with 4K, 60 FPS video, HDR, some really intense color matching is being done between them, the whole deal. And then the camera app is also updated a bit for the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro. And I'll talk about this more in the 11 Pro video because I have some stronger feelings about it. Uh, but generally it's pretty familiar, but there are some tweaks. So when you first open the camera app, the app kind of hints at ultra wide by showing you this faded out extra wide shot that's wider than your current frame, but not in your shot. And then you can hit that one X button at the bottom to punch out to ultra wide, and then you get everything in there. That is your glorious iPhone super wide camera. Uh, this is gonna be great for, again, people who are shooting a lot of iPhone video. Those vloggers, it's 4K. The iPhone is still IP68 water resistant, so it can get kind of wet like a GoPro if you want to. Um, I don't know, I'm just glad they finally got on this ultra wide train. So that's good. The selfie camera on the front is also now upgraded. It's now a 12 megapixel camera and it's a tiny bit wider. And you can access this extra little bit of wideness by hitting the little expansion button in the middle or by default, it'll actually just go wider when you flip the phone sideways because you're probably taking a group shot. But honestly, it really is just a tiny bit wider. And also now slow motion video is now supported by the front facing camera. And for whatever reason, they decided to name this and they're naming it Slofies, slow motion selfies. Uh, that's probably the first and last time I'll ever say that word out loud. But there's also a new night mode. And this is something we've been looking forward to ever since Pixel's night sight took direct jabs at the iPhone on stage and you know Huawei's night mode has gotten extremely good and others have started making their own night modes. We've been sort of curious what Apple's cooking up for their night mode for the iPhone. So we have iPhone 11, we get this night mode, but as you may notice, it's not in the default modes down here at the bottom. It actually only activates when it's dark enough. So I could kind of trick it by covering up the lens, making it dark, and then a new night mode indicator pops up in the top left and then you can decide to adjust it or turn it off from there, but you can't turn it on anytime you want. Either way, this is definitely something I will be testing for the full review along with all this other camera stuff. Very curious to see how it performs and if it's as good as what they showed on stage and as good as the others. 
but it's here, there's a night mode. And then the other new thing is, of course, your new specs, the internals, a new A13 Bionic chip, which they say is the most powerful CPU and GPU in any phone. And honestly, I tend to believe them at this point. On a seven nanometer architecture, Apple has been making incredible silicon in their phones for years, so I'm expecting great performance. And not only is it more powerful, but they also claim the battery will last one hour longer than the iPhone XR, which was already really good. And then there's also something they didn't even mention on stage, which is that there's a new dedicated U1 chip, which will help with spatial positioning relative to other U1 enabled phones. And my favorite demo or use case of this is two iPhone 11s near each other. You can airdrop files back and forth by like beaming them at the other phone. It uses an ultra wideband signal, which as far as I can tell is the first I've seen this used in this way in a smartphone. And yeah, you can, you can just send memes or whatever you want, just beam airdrops directly at other people. It'll show up first in the share sheet when you point it at the other person's phone, which is pretty cool. And some other minor stuff, Face ID on this phone, they say is now up to 30% faster uh, and will supposedly work at more angles, but I'm not exactly sure how many new angles, if it's like drastically better. We all know how hard it is to unlock an iPhone that's sitting on a table, so I'm hoping this makes that a bit easier. And then the portrait mode in the camera also will now work on people and pets and objects. So if you remember, the iPhone XR would only let you try portrait mode when it detected a human face. So that's a new feature for iPhone 11. You can take portrait mode on anything. And that's, uh, that's about it for new features for iPhone 11. Listen, it's a subtle update. No way around that. It's very incremental is the word we like to use, um, especially when the design is super, super similar. But Honestly, for Apple, this is probably not a bad thing. See, the iPhone XR was by far the most popular phone Apple sold in their lineup last year. It sold more than the iPhone XS and XS Max, thanks to the lower price. And so this year, they're actually lowering the price. It's down to a $699 starting price for the iPhone 11. And that's probably gonna be the case here again this year. It's probably gonna be their most popular iPhone. Uh, there's six new colors for people to pick from, so you can go nuts again with yellow or purple or green or whatever suits you, or grab a skin, whatever you gotta do. But uh, yeah, they're gonna feel very familiar to people who have used any iPhone, a 10R or any 10S or anything from the past few years, really. And that's probably what Apple's wanted. My only disappointment, really, I think, is the display. I was kind of hoping they would bump up the resolution because the lower resolution of the 10R was kind of my only big disappointment with it. I mean, it was kind of everyone's disappointment. But then again, you know, dropping the price to 699, Apple's not a company that drops the price on a new item very often. So I guess I can't really be mad. But you already know, I gotta put it through my testing. I gotta take my sample photos, take my videos, use the phone, see how that battery life is, and all of that will reveal if it's actually worth the money. But yeah, that's basically it. That is what's new with iPhone 11. Um, feel free to share this video with others who you think are also interested in the iPhone 11, and of course, stay tuned for the iPhone 11 Pro video, link below. And today there was also a new Apple Watch Series 5, a smaller update, but with an always-on display now and the same battery life, which is cool. And there's a new baseline 10.2-inch iPad with pencil support and smart connector pins and a pretty great low price. There's gonna be a new podcast episode of the Waveform Podcast detailing all of this stuff, so stay tuned for that if you want a full breakdown of the event. Um, but yeah, definitely get subscribed to see the review videos when they come out, if you haven't already. So this has been your first look at the iPhone 11. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.